Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm so excited that you're with me. I've got a great interview with a friend of mine, Linda Sandals, who is a fiber artist and painter here in Asheville, North Carolina. Actually, one of the incredibly one of the few members of my Creative to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program who are in Asheville. So we've gotten to know each other uh, over this last year, and just so incredible to hear the things that God has done in her life. We're going to be sharing that on the podcast with you uh, later on today because she was she was one of these people that you know, like a lot of us, went through a lot of different. Uh, seasons of creativity, starting in in basketry and then in painting. And then uh, now she's into fiber. Now she's mixing a little bit of everything. (laughs) She's got such a great creative story. But even though she was creating great art, she was really paralyzed internally about how to get that work out to the marketplace, how to really connect with clients, tell her story, and also how to figure out how God worked in to that whole thing of, of her being an artist. Well, you're going to love her story. You're going to love how all the pieces begin to come together in her life. So stay tuned. It's going to be um, a great show with Linda today. Also, today is uh, the door opening. Da, 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 da. <laughs> the doors are open uh, for the last time this year to be a part of the Created to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. Uh, we've been telling you about that on the podcast for the last few weeks. Today's the day. Uh, the 17th of September, all the way through Saturday, the 21st. The doors are open. It's the last time this year that you can become a member. Um, We've told you so many stories of transformation. We've told you so many stories of people going from broke, busted, and disgusted to really thriving financially, spiritually, artistically, uh, in their marketing, in everything that they're doing as artists uh, through being a part of this program. And listen, the only thing that's left is for you to say, yes, we would love to invite you to be able to, to join us inside this community. It's not just a program. It's not just, listen, if you've ever done any kind of coaching program online or taken an e-course online or something like that, I can guarantee you it's not like this. This is not just an archive of a bunch of videos and we just kind of push you out in the water and say, see you later. No, <laughs> it's not like that at all. Every week, you get the opportunity in the context of our group to have a conversation with me on our live Q&A chats. I do that every week. I come into our private Facebook group for only the mentoring program. You get to ask me any question you want. If you've got a question, I answer it personally right there on video. So even though I can't come to your house and do a one-on-one, we can do it virtually. And it's so helpful because you get to ask any question you want and everybody in the community gets to hear the answers. Also, you've heard about maybe our our mastermind groups. It's virtual small groups, all right, online uh, on a monthly basis where you get to talk with other artists who are doing the same thing that you're doing, growing in the Lord, growing their art business, becoming better artists, all from a kingdom perspective. We do uh, Skype video calls, and you may be thinking, well, I don't know how to do Skype. I can never do that. Trust me. We walk you through the whole process. It's awesome. So in addition to all of the learning, the tons and tons of videos and the learning that you're that you're going to get to be a part of, it's really the relationship and the connection that you get inside of the community that really, really makes the difference. Information is not where learning happens. It's interaction with that information and with others along the journey that really, really makes the difference. So listen, I want to invite you to click the link that's in the show notes, all right? And uh, you can go to that page. You can see tons of testimonials, uh, watch some videos of artists who we've actually gone to their studio and asked them to share their story about being in the program, just so you can get an idea of the real kind of change that can begin to happen in your life. Listen, the only difference between where you are now and where you could be a year from now is your willingness to say yes. See, your willingness to say yes opens the door for God to be able to move in an accelerated way 
in your life. Or you could just continue to do the same things that you've been doing and get the same results that you've been getting. And I don't know about you, but I did that for a long time. (laughs) I've met other artists who did that for a long time. And guess what? After two, three, five, 10, 20 years of doing the same old thing and looking for different results, sometimes something just clicks inside of you and you say, you know what? Maybe I should try something new. Maybe I should step out on faith. Maybe I should take the step to become a part of the Creative to Thrive mentoring program. Listen, this is not going to solve all the problems of your life and make everything come up roses and everything be, uh, you know, a yellow brick road in your life forever. But listen, I know that I know that I know because I see the transformation every day that if you will say yes to being a part of this community and investing in yourself, I know that our community will show up to meet you. I'll show up to meet you. And more importantly, God will show up to meet you just for you to start seeing real transformation start happening in your life in an accelerated way. All right. So click the link in the show notes. Really consider being a part of the program. Your last opportunity is September the 21st. All right. That's Saturday. It's going to be over. And then uh, the doors will be closed to the program for the rest of the year. Now, don't be sending me an email on Monday. Matt, I wanted to do it, but I just couldn't do it. You got to make a decision. All right. You got... <laughs> so go ahead and click the link and uh, and do it now. All right. You will be so, so glad that you did. Now, before we jump into uh, the interview with Linda, which is awesome, like I said, you're going to love that. I want to give a shout out to one of one of you guys, our, one of our podcast listeners. This one is from Knowles20. And this is what they said. The title is called Just What I Needed. I've been listening to this podcast for the past few months and have been so inspired. I've been a working artist for 10 years but was feeling major burnout. Matt's podcast and mentoring program have made me think differently about the arts and have given me a new perspective and renewed excitement about my future as a kingdom creative. Thanks, Matt. Well, Knowles20, thank you so much for writing a review, for subscribing to the podcast, and for being a member uh, of the Creative to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. Again, I'm so excited that the things that we're doing inside that community and here on the podcast are a real blessing in your life. So thanks so much. Well, hey guys, listen, if you've not subscribed or reviewed to the podcast, please do that. All right. Take a moment uh, as you're listening today or at the end of the podcast and click subscribe, write a review. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll give you a shout out coming up real soon on the podcast. All right. Well, hey, I'm going to get out of the way because there's a great interview ahead with my friend, artist, Linda Sandals. Here you go. Well, hey, everybody, I'm so glad to have my friend Linda Sondles with me today on the podcast. Linda, thanks so much for being with me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're you're one of the few artists, like very few, in Created to Thrive who are actually in Asheville. What? Yay! (laughs) (laughs) So you, you drop by the studio. If we're going to lunch coming up, it's like, this is fun. We get to, like, see each other in the flesh. So yeah. As, I know other people are jealous about that, but uh, <laughs> they'll have opportunity. Tell everybody who you are and what you do just briefly because I love your work. You're a fiber artist. I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, but give everybody kind of the the, the nickel tour of, of who you are and what you do creatively. Well, um, I'm a fiber artist and a painter. Um, I've never been able to completely give up painting. Um, uh, my primary expression in fiber is the art quilt. Mm. And I love landscapes. I love abstract and representational forms of the landscape. So that's most of what my work is. Um, I paint a lot of the fabric that I use in my quilts, right. especially those pieces for the sky and the landscape. And I also paint silk scarves. Wow. So, because I like to watch paint move over surfaces. How cool. Yeah. And you have to tell people that you, I guess you still are a basket maker, but you don't do that as much anymore but i was so amazed when you <laughs> you started seeing some of my work on online and you're like oh i can see this influence and that influence and i'm like nobody <laughs> knows those names <laughs> well, how does she know this <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's part of your expression as well right you did that for a it lot is. of years it's part of my journey um you know i i just 
I was thinking about this, you know, when you gave us the questions to ask, to, to think about, you know, I've loved color and, um, and working with it in no, no matter what medium it is from the time I touched finger paints and Play-Doh. Okay. Wow. Wow. Um, and my journey through the arts has just been, I've been in about every medium there is. <laughs> Everyone Welcome to the club, is. right? <laughs> yes. And and just I think just seeking that 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 final expression. But I was I was in basketry for about 10 years. Wow. Um wow. seriously pursuing it. Um and I you know, I made some decent money at it. Um but then the, when I saw fabric and what the pattern and texture and the color in those little pieces of of fabric that just that just blew me out of the water. So wow. Wow. I did both for a while, and I still do make a basket occasionally, just because yeah. it's so peaceful and so <laughs> relaxing, especially when you're, you know, kind of going on there. And yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. funny because I was, you know, this time of year in the fall, all of my daylilies are kind of going, eh, and the that beautiful foliage that falls is great for weaving. And um, it's so funny. I'm out there gardening and trying to clean things up, and before you know it, I'm sitting on the ground with a bunch of daylily fronds but <laughs> like what are you doing i'm like i'm making a basket she's like what i mean <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, what do basket makers do in their free time they make baskets because yeah <laughs> i love it right That's what yeah we yeah it's yeah funny. there's there's just nothing like it <laughs> now when you started making uh years ago did you because you've kind of always sold a lot of your work how did you start getting into selling your work even through all the different creative mediums that you've that you've been well, in. Was um, a natural thing for you or yeah in my in my journey i mean i when i really started to sell things was when i was making baskets most of my pieces before that i had a few commissions um and i had a few things but most things i ended up giving to people who who were really really in love with them you know this, yeah, my journey is very much like the um the emerging, you know, the the three levels, you know, the three phases that you pass through when you're yeah, when you're true. growing things. So, um, but I did um, I did several shows when I was making baskets um, in Ohio before we moved here, um, and I had people just collecting them. There was one professor; he was a math professor at the Miami University in in Ohio where I worked. And he, I was making these little baskets like Michael Davis, you know, the little teeny tiny reed, and then I would paint them and then I would embellish them with beads and um, wax linen and feathers and things. And none of those survived. He has them all. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the smaller they were, the more he wanted them. Wow. Um, and then um, my husband um, got a job offer to move to Asheville that was like, you know, we can't say no to this. Yeah. So we came and right about the same time that we came was when I was introduced to quilting. So it kind of all snowballed. And and then, you know, I only ever saw him at the show and I didn't know about how I could stay in touch with him and, you know, all that. Just, it just kind of went by the wayside. But yeah, yeah then um, quilting, um, I started selling work, um, slowly about 10 or 15 years ago really when i began to get the expression um i started making the landscape quilts i started really tuning into god and my spirit in in making things and that's right. when i started selling things right. small things <laughs> yeah it's, it's interesting i think all of us had this little journey it's like you make a few things, you give it away, then you think, well, somebody buy this? I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then you sell a little bit. And I remember I was selling my baskets, gosh, for $25, $30. If I could sell one for 50, I was blown away. Yeah. And um, I'd make my Christmas money every yeah. year. And, and that was about it. And it wasn't until we really moved to Asheville and right before that, that I started really getting the context for, um, you know, mm -hmm. being in a market, such a vibrant market as we're in, mm -hmm. uh, for, for being able to sell fine craft. Mm -hmm. I know when, when we met and as you were considering coming into the mentoring program and everything, you said you were making great art, you know, but you were still really in a place of kind of feeling paralyzed about how to move forward to really take that to the next level of building a business, mm -hmm. telling your story and, 
talk mm-hmm. about that because I think a lot of people struggle with that, that, okay, I got a little something going on here, but I'm not really sure how to take it to the mm-hmm. next level. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have to kind of back up a little bit and just yeah. say that in 2014, um, Grace Carol Bomer invited me to come and, and share space in her studio. Oh, wow. In River Arts District. She was, there were like three or four people who were leaving the studio that she had. And so she invited three or four others of us to come in there. And that was the first time I had a regular, permanent space Mm. to display and sell my work. And I was still working a job. I was still working my job five days a week. And so I would go there and sit the gallery on Saturdays. And I learned so much about just dealing with the public and interacting and and how to present things how to present my work in this in that situation and how to work in a studio with people oh yeah hello my studio's at my house now you know um that was that was huge and i'm still learning in that respect um so um so then in 2016 um my husband we moved to eco depot marketplace and that's where i've been ever since right and again i've i've i learned a lot from just being there interacting with people learning how to do your space and everything but then um i was still stuck matt because Mm. all the gunk that was in my head about and all the lies that i believed about you know what it is to be an artist and there was a disconnect between identity as an artist Mm. and the practical steps of being one and doing what you need to do and making your living in the world and i had no clue (laughs) (laughs) clue. because go a little deeper in that because i mean you've been a believer for a long time you love the lord i mean Mm -hmm. it's a vibrant part of your life and yet you've got your art life over here Mm-hmm. and so it sounds like there was kind of a disconnect between the there two. was there was um so i became a believer in 1997 i haven't been that not that long well 20 years 22 right. years and in the five-year period before that um the lord basically poured things into my head and gave me all these I used to call them abstract doodle line drawings because they were <laughs> they didn't mean anything to anybody but me, and they still don't. Um, but I'm convinced that that was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Looking back on this, drawing me into a relationship with God so that I could then tap in. Um, but you know, the journey of a of a new believer is so. I never, I never connected at all with art. I mean, I saw that, I saw, it's looking back on it that I connected it with art. Um, None of us, I don't think, I didn't have have a context of anybody that was an artist and pursuing that in the context of their faith. And I mean, no, yeah, no. um, Grace Carol Bummer was the only one that I knew that I knew. um, And uh, like, again, that wasn't until much later. um, And 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 her art was so very obviously about is is so very obviously about the incarnation and i didn't really have a a focus for that um i used some of these little abstract pieces and i made some fabric collages and this is primarily what i put in her place um things from scripture and just sort of abstract um little pieces of fabric you know just right. stuck together i really wasn't doing landscapes very much but mm-hmm. it was what it seemed like it was messages that the Lord was giving me, and I, I, I went there. And then, um, I'm not sure when the when the real landscape bug bit me. Um, um, but it was during that time I took some pictures up on the parkway, and I just thought I gotta make quilts out of this. I've got to. <laughs> so, and the other thing, um, God showed me sunrise the sky at sunrise and what happens to it and and how you know the light goes from that kind of that gold to that kind of green and then blue sky and then how it changes around the horizon and so I started painting that and then I started incorporating that fabric into the landscape Mm. and and then looking at clouds and looking at everything I it's all his yeah absolutely (laughs) 
but it seems like even though you were making work and you're seeing that happen, there was still like a, a was. happening in your, your own mind about yes. maybe your validity as an artist or as, yes. as his daughter. I mean, talk yes. about that a little bit. Okay. Um, well, last year I joined a group of quilters um, and reconnected with Julie Bagamary. Um, yeah. after a few years. And Julie, I'll be honest, Julie was instrumental in encouraging me to join the mentoring program because wow. I saw utter change in her life from where she had been when I knew her before. Yeah, she's had such and, a transformation. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah, so yeah. we would have these conversations and walk and 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 she would just, she was speaking in a way that that um, I thought, wow, you know, if this is if this has happened for her, maybe this could happen for me, mm. um, because I still just believed so many lies about, you know, and and I was afraid. I I couldn't, um, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. What if I this? What if I that? You know, afraid, worried, anxiety, fear of just everything. You know, I can make good art. And that was about that was about it. Yeah. So um, I just reached a point where finally I went through your you had your little five video series that you did last fall. Oh yeah. <clears throat> your free video series in front of Christian artists, and I thought, okay, you know, I got to get rid of these demons. I got to get rid of this stuff in my head that is holding me back. Yeah. And I knew about strongholds, and I knew about. <clears throat> um, you know, um, renewing your mind, but not at the level to which you take us in mm. the mentoring program. Mm. And so I joined up and if life has never been the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think, the, I think for me, when I started learning years ago about renewing your mind and the process, I was so excited about how quickly change could happen when you learn how it happened and then i was, then i got kind of frustrated and mad at every church i'd ever been a part of because i was like why has nobody ever told me yes this? you know what is the deal because i think so many believers and especially artists because we're intuitive and empathetic and, and all this sort of thing so many of us struggle with these identity issues and this feeling of unworthiness and is my work good enough and can I really make it and is this really my calling and blah 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 and it's like when you overlay then a, a distrust of your own belief in your identity in the Lord that becomes a big jumbled mess yes and so many well-meaning artists who love Jesus are existing in that kind of muck and mire for years yes. Yes. And, and I'm so every time somebody says, you don't have to live like that. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> you know, that's right. you've that's been right. such a, because we're here in Asheville, you'll drop by every now and then and be like, you won't believe it. I just can't believe it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my life. And I'm like, I know this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And you know, Matt, I was just thinking, um, um, and we all, um, we all have wounds that we get as children. Yeah. Um, and my big wounds as children were about expressing my enthusiasm for art as something to do. So chastised by a teacher, wow. an art teacher. Wow. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> and within a week or two, some mean old neighbor lady wouldn't buy my potholders. <laughs> I was like, hey. <laughs> And, but I did not realize how deeply that penetrated me yeah. until probably 30 or 40 years later, when all of a sudden there was all this pain around about, not about making it, but about sharing it. Wow. Wow. And so, um, and I still struggle with that a little bit and I just keep affirming who I am in Christ, you know, yeah. I'm God's beloved daughter. And he put me here on this earth with a purpose. The purpose was to make beautiful stuff that blesses, yeah. comforts, heals, and inspires people. Come on. Poo. I just, <laughs> it, it's so amazing. And it happened in my life. And I, that's why I'm always like, you know, you can only 
communicate the things, you know, that God's done in your life. That's where you have the authority, you know, to, yes. to, to others. And I'm like, there's such, you can, I spent years cause I'm like a type a doer, you know, kind of person. And I spent years learning, trying to learn the marketing techniques, trying to do it this way, follow that person, do, you know, before social media came out, do it this way, do it that way, whatever. And it was like pouring water through a sieve because if your heart's not right, and I don't mean right as in you're in sin and all that. I mean, if, no. you, if your heart and your mind are not in a place, a healthy place with the Lord where, where you can really receive the things that he's got for you, then all that stuff just flows through you. And it's like the Bible talks about, you know, broken cisterns that will not hold water. And it's like when your mind and your heart begin to be healed and whole and strengthened in the Lord, that's why we spend the whole first part of the mentoring program doing that with people. Yeah. Then it's amazing. People have these stories of like, wow, I started meeting clients or my art began to sell or, <laughs> you know, and it's like all of that is, is finally just got a context in your heart where it can begin to take root and really mm -hmm. grow as opposed to being, you know, just kind of flying out the door. And that's what I see in you. I mean, it's really been such a beautiful story. To, to oh my gosh. I mean, I've been in the it, next month, September 18th is my one year anniversary in the mentoring program. And, awesome. and I still have a long way to go. I freely admit that I am just now feeling a little more confident to deal with social media and deal with writing my story and deal with all that. I mean, I've really been working on the heart and mind and building up my art, building up my um, um, finishing things, you know, go yeah, back and sure. learn your craft kind of thing. Yeah. And, and so UFOs, right? The unfinished. Office. <laughs> oh yeah. I got lots. <laughs> it's the quilter's world. That's right. Yeah, but you know, I don't call it that. I, I used to call it that, but what I say now is that they have an extended incubation period. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh I love gosh. it. I love it. Well, you know, Linda, I, I know that there are people that are out there right now that are, are thinking, gosh, she's telling my story. You know, <laughs> she's, she's, that's my story that she's, that she's telling of, mm -hmm. of making art, but not, you know, being able to figure out really how to, how to take it to the next level. Your story has been so inspiring. What would you say to somebody who's sitting where you were a year ago or two years ago, uh, just to inspire them and help them along, along their journey? Don't quit. Mm. make art every day and join this mentoring program oh <laughs> i mean really uh, yeah if 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 even if you're not a christian you know this is um this is the most amazing thing it it is and i you know when we when you were mentioning about um why isn't this ever taught in church in churches you know for 15 years i was looking for for people who really believed about the kingdom the way that I did, that way that a way that I was learning. And then there, all of a sudden, there you were. And it was like, oh my gosh. And I remember Julie telling me, Linda, it's a Bible study with art. <laughs> You'll love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, and so I thought, okay, you know, if God used art to bring me to him, then then there's something else that he wants to do. Yeah. There's something yeah. else he wants to do in me. But I have to surrender. I have to surrender. And that's the other thing I would say to people, you know, Jesus wants to teach you the unforced rhythm of grace. Yeah. You know, like Shay yeah, says. Good. And right. and in that place is complete and total surrender to him. And he will transform your life. He will give you a new life. You will recover your life. Yeah. And, and when you just, when I know that, that this is the hardest thing for me, when I just surrender everything, when I release everything to him, when I let it go like a helium balloon going up in the air, that's a really good image, you know, yeah. then, then he can work. Yeah. Then he can, then he can bless you the way he wants to bless you. And, you know, that's what happened last week when I sold those two quilts, I sold two quilts. <laughs> in three days ah! that's right that's right it, well you know i think the beautiful thing too is when you start understanding how the kingdom works in the context of of your assignment you start to realize that you don't have to live in these silos of my spiritual life over here my art life my business oh. life. no it's all 
in the kingdom and the same principles that works for your heart and mind and works in your spiritual life works in your business. It's all yeah. about listening to his yeah. voice, being led by his voice and, um, and doing that, I think in the context of community, because just like you said, like with Julie, you said, Hey, look at the change that's happening in me. This could happen in you. You're turning around and doing that as well. I mean, I love that because before I knew it, like if you don't know Julie guys, uh, you know, go on uh, our website, you can watch her story and um, it's, she's got an incredible story of transformation, but she was like, you know, really uh, timid and just kind of quiet and all that. And now she went through, <laughs> she's still in the mentoring program and doing incredibly, but uh, she started this Bible study at her house for people from her church. Then she started another one. She's like, Matt, would you come speak it? I'm like, I can't believe this. You're like, what are you doing? She's, <laughs> she's starting this thing. And then before I knew it, there you are starting. You're like, Hey, I got created to thrive and I got these people, you know, <laughs> but it's I like, know. when something changes you, I mean, that's how the kingdom works, right? Yes. When something changes you, you want to tell everybody about it. Yes. And definitely. I, um, one of the things that I really realized that, um, um, that God put on my heart is mentoring, you know, mm. now I'm not going to start a mentoring group like you did, but <laughs> in the group, um, and with people, with other artists in the River Arts District, with other artists in the gallery, you know, I, I so many times I hear people saying, why isn't my work selling? Why doesn't somebody buy this? Why doesn't, you know, and so I have the opportunity to bring my faith and my experience and, and what I've learned and pass it on and encourage. And that's wow. just huge. Well, you know, I tell people, I tell people all the time, you know, because everybody, you know, I've had many people over the years say, what does is, what is selling art have to do with the kingdom of God? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, the kingdom is all about relationships. And, you know, the Lord had me start my art career in the middle of the worst, I mean, one of the worst recessions that we've ever had as a country. And yet I was thriving, making money, growing a business through the whole thing. Well, listen, if you think that doesn't get other artists' attention, and want them to, you know, take you to coffee. I've had many say, can we just go get coffee or can I come by the studio? Because I have no idea how you're doing what you're doing. And I would love to find out. And what an opportunity yes. <laughs> to use what God's done in your life as then a platform to be able to speak into their life. Yes. And I love that. It's not just about the things that we create. It's about the person that we're being created into, right? We're his ambassadors mm. and he wants good ones. That's right. <laughs> Right. Well, you're a yeah. good one, Linda, and I so Thank appreciate you. you being on here today, sharing your story. I know folks are going to want to connect with you online. So where's the best place that people can connect with you to see your art and, and follow what's going on with you? So my website is lindasondals.com and that's Linda with a Y, L-Y-N-D-A. If you do the other, you won't find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm on and Facebook, Linda Sondals Studio. Instagram, Linda Sondal Studio, all run together, one word. Awesome, awesome. Well, Linda, thank you so much for being on the program today. And I know folks are going to want to follow you and, and keep up with your journey as you continue to bust through all these roadblocks and mindsets that have held people back for so long and, and really be who God's called you to be. So, Thank thanks. you. It's my great pleasure. Thank you, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.